coming in as well. Okay. All right. Looks like we are live. Uh, welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Meet the Staff Mondays. Uh, this week, I have invited on one of the Purit staffers, uh, Mr. Paul Moore, to join us on the program. So, Paul, thanks for joining us. How are we doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing good. Just got home from work not that long ago, so now it's time to relax. Yeah, time to relax. Yeah, you know, I, I'd love to do that relaxing thing after work, but that's bedtime for me because I always get done really late at night. So, uh, but uh, no relaxing there. But uh, speaking of work, what do you do for a living, Paul? Uh, I work for Mars Wrigley, which is the M&M &M company, you know, so I work up in Elizabethtown. I'm a process engineer. So to make that really easy for everybody, I do uh, like lean activities. It's about reliability of the equipment um, and making it run better. Um, and then also like Six Sigma, like uh, CI, continuous improvement, money savings, you know, what makes the world go around more money. Right. Cost reduction. I may know yeah. a little bit about that stuff. That was my career for most of my life. So uh, I can relate to the uh, continuous improvement movement and all the fun stuff. And everybody's like, well, what's a black belt? And that's karate. You know, Six Sigma is uh, completely different. But uh, black belt's um, pretty good. I, I'm under the screen belt. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You got to come in with a different karate belt. I was at it for a very long time, but you know now I I, I turn my belt in and uh, I'm just drilling bowling balls for a living because you know what, I, it's not like working anymore. It's uh, you know you go into the shop and, and help people every day, and it never feels like you're working another day again. So, uh, but anyway, we, you know it's great to talk about you know what you do for a living and stuff. But you know what we really want to understand, and you know why we do these meet the staff is is to kind of get to know Paul you know, a little better when it comes to, you know, his his bowling game and, and kind of where it started from him. So, Paul, why don't you kind of take us back and uh, kind of tell us, you know, how did you get into the game and and uh, where did it start for you? All right. So I'm a little more unique than everybody else. I didn't start at a young age. Um, I was a baseball player in high school. When I was younger, baseball was my life. I always had a baseball in my hand. Um, and then when I got out of high school, I just naturally followed into recreational softball. And then so kind of like the bowlers are today, I traveled all over the East Coast playing softball. We'd, one weekend we'd be in South Carolina, we'd be in Florida, we'd be all over the East Coast playing, played at very high levels. Um, and then age caught up to me. Knees kind of started getting a little uh, bad. It got a, you know, and just wanted to have a change. A friend of mine that I played softball with said, hey, you ought to bowl in our bowling league. Um, so I guess it was around 2011, I think it was, started dabbling around in this thing called bowling. Back then, I was kind of that semi two-hander, took my thumb out and just cranked it up, threw it down the lane. And then I thought, well, that, this ain't consistent. One week I would throw great, one week I would throw bad. And then I put my thumb in and kind of taught myself how to bowl. And then um, 2014, uh, my daughter Erin and my wife Jill decided they wanted to venture into the world of uh, bowling. So I started to teach them. Um, so then I started Googling everything, watching YouTube and picking everybody's brain that it would possibly listen to me. Um, and then I started teaching them when I actually was teaching myself. And here we are today. <laughs> right. And I mean, obviously, the whole family is pretty much into it. Um, you know, it's exciting news and she's not on the program and we will in the future. But Erin uh, had just uh, signed her letter of intent. So your daughter is going to Chestnut Hill. Uh, yes. to further her education and uh, athletic career. So that's pretty exciting, especially since you just said, you know, she only got into it in 2014, not a lot of years and, and got herself a, uh, you know, a, a opportunity here with the university. So that's, that's awesome news. And uh, yeah. the wife, she, she, we'll, may, she may kill me for, the, she may kill me for this one, but uh, what was it? Uh, 24, or not even 2014 for Aaron. Jill was 2014. So Aaron was four years ago. So Aaron was in 2016 in February. She says, dad, I don't want to play soccer anymore. I'm like, what? Well, I want to do something different in high school. So she says, how about softball? I said, Aaron, you realize these girls have been playing since they've been eight. Well, you, you're good at softball. You'll, you'll be able to teach me. Or how about bowling? So I said, well, let's, let's maybe try both and see which one you like the most. And back then for her, it was off the wrong foot with a little backup ball, throwing it, you know, and scoring 88 was great. She was excited when she broke 100. You know, and all of a sudden, in six short months, we were teaching her how to bowl. And the same thing I teach the kids on the high school team now, it's dots to the foul line, dots to the foul line. If you can get that down, everything else makes the game so much easier. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, and then uh, as you said, you know, Jill, I'm sure at some point we'll have her on the program here as well. Uh, but, you know, the wife only in it for six years and is becoming pretty accomplished very quickly. Um, you know, over the weekend, she had a bunch of uh, 700 series in the city county tournament and bowled extremely well, even with a, uh, a torn labrum. So, you know, it's um, I know she's headed for the DL for a little bit here, but uh, she'll be back before you know it. Yeah, she, she, she's a little disappointed because, like you said, she is bowling the best of her life right now. But I, I have no doubt that she'll come back full strength and probably even better. Yeah. So you did mention, so you're doing some coaching at the high school level? Yes, yeah, so I'm assistant coach at the Elizabethtown High School. Okay, and that's a that's definitely a program that's been, uh, you know, one of the mainstays and, you know, has always had bigger programs for one and has produced a lot of uh, very talented uh, kids that have come out of there. Um, you know, the, the list could go on and on, but uh, how's uh, how's the bowling season looking for high school right now? Is there any plans for that moving forward or are they on a pause? Um, we currently are on a pause. We started open gyms two weeks ago. Um, we played around uh, getting getting kids out, just trying to get them to shake off the rust because a lot of them haven't bowled since March. Um, and then with uh, school going virtual, the last uh, about last Wednesday they shut us down. Uh, the season's due to start this Friday, so we are still on schedule to go live with practice starting on Friday. Um, I did hear our numbers are down a little bit this year because some parents worried about COVID, some kids worried about some of the restrictions of uh, travel, only being able to travel with nine, which last year we had a team of 27. So, you know, we would usually wow. take 15 to 17 kids to get them the experience of traveling and bowling in other houses. But just with the COVID restrictions this year, numbers are going to be dwindled a little bit and kids are worried about, you know, the time they're going to get to spend traveling and, and actually bowling. Right. Right. And it's, you know, it's unique. And I think every sport is going to be, you know, handled a little different. Uh, the, the nice thing about our sport and hopefully it's kind of realized out there is um, it's kind of perfectly um, designed to be able to social distance per se, um, you know, while you're on the approach. Um, so, you know, there's so many different um, ideas when it comes up to how mass usage should be and such. But, uh, you know, if it gets to that point, you can definitely have a mask on the whole time. And when you go up for delivery, you can pull it down. Um, so it is designed that way if it's followed by everybody. Um, so hopefully, you know, at some point, I know the the collegiate ranks and talking to some of the, the college coaches, uh, they've had some tournaments now and they've they've used that system. And, you know, so far, so good. Uh, so hopefully that continues to progress forward. Um, and uh, let these kids get this experience and hopefully not get too much of a shortened season. Um, but, you know, but for your, uh, you know, for you personally now, so you haven't been in the game, you know, a ton of time. Uh, you're starting to compete now, obviously leagues, tournaments. Um, you know, where can people find you now, Paul? Where are you doing most of your bowling and or, you know, tournaments and, and such things like that? Well, um, especially this time of the year, you can find me at Clearview just about every day of the week, except for maybe minus Wednesdays because I do bowl in the travel league there. Mm -hmm. um, so we travel throughout Lancaster County and bowl um, against other teams in the travel league. Um, so you can find me there on Wednesday nights. Um, and then, like I said, Monday nights, we bowl in a Monday major scratch league on uh, at Clearview. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I am there from uh, about 3 to 5.30 for the high school practices. Uh, or matches, uh, and then usually on a Saturday and Sunday, definitely Sunday mornings, uh, usually the Dollar Bowl. I have, a, I usually go out and help out friends that ask that want some advice on their game or to look at it or just go out and hang out and bowl. So we usually meet there at 9 o'clock, and then I'm usually open for anybody to grab me, ask questions, get help. Uh, so I usually help out on Sunday mornings over there. And then, of course, Saturday mornings, uh, Mason and uh, my son Mason and Aaron Bowles. So I'm usually there from about nine to about 11, 30, 12 o'clock uh, helping out with the youth program. So any of the kids that need help or any suggestions, I usually help out there too. Awesome. And I know, uh, I think I saw earlier today, Mason nabbed his first uh, buck. So that's pretty exciting, huh? Yes. Uh, yeah. He was excited yesterday. He was looking, he, luckily your number ain't in his phone or he'd have called you to tell you his hunting story. <laughs> Anybody that would listen on our way home, he was calling. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I probably I probably would have answered and said, "Hey, I'm trying to bowl right now," but uh, you know, you can tell this story <laughs> later. But um, you know, that's pretty. Like my, my dad was always one to try to get me going out hunting, and I'll be honest with you, um, I just wasn't into the whole sitting in a tree and wait for something to walk by or you know, out in the freezing cold. I just didn't get it. It didn't make any sense to me. 
but I did enjoy like the venison and the beef jerky and stuff that he would make out of what he shot. But uh, that's it's not for me. So if you guys get some of that stuff up, I'll gladly buy some. That's 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 my kind of hunting. Well, you missed the wrong day of City County. He had uh, some of his deer baloney from the deer he shot earlier this year at City County yesterday. Uh, so you missed you missed out on the wrong day. <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, uh, for me to to walk away from the shop on a Saturday is a, what I would refer to as not the greatest business decision. So uh, I was where I needed to be Saturday and then Sunday yesterday. We went up to Pottsville and uh, supported uh, our friend uh, TJ Trout and his tournament se- series up there, and uh, well, pretty well. Um, you know, I didn't you know make the finals like I, I'm accustomed to up there, but uh, definitely threw it well. And sometimes they just don't all fall your way, so. Um, but looking forward to it, looking forward to league tonight, actually. And it sounds weird for me to say, I was always one of those guys where it was like, oh, man, I got a bowl league tonight, you know, I, but we're, we're enjoying it. Um, you know, and, uh, I think it helps when you bowl with individuals you really like and, uh, have a lot in common, just do a little laughing, loosens you up a little bit. It's never so, you know, it's not tense or anything like that. So, um, good stuff. And, you know, we had a great time over the weekend. Unfortunately, you were bowling pretty far away from us Friday night, so, you didn't get in on all the camaraderie up on that end of the building, but uh, with uh, a lot of the Puritan staff there bowling at the same time, we uh, we definitely had a good time. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's, it's just about meeting people, having fun, the camaraderie. Um, you know, one of our favorite nights is Monday night, even though it's an 845 league. We don't get home to 11. I got to be up early for work, but we have a good time. We always laugh, joke, carry on. And even though sometimes you're not the lowest guy, you're still being traded for a player to be named later because you missed a 10 pin or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it, I can relate to that on a Monday night. I mean, you know, you'll throw one of the best shots in the night and somebody will stone nine or stone eight. And it's, it's not like, Oh, it's yeah. Throw it better. Or, you know, a little lighter, you know, you know, you're just getting completely roasted right off the bat. So, you know, that, that part of the stuff is fun. And, yeah. uh, you know, you got to remember as much as we love this game, we want to compete and stuff. You, you always got to take a step back too, and, and, uh, make sure that you have fun with it as well. Cause you know, when you really think about it, you need to, to look at any sport that you're playing and remember why you love it so much. Right. So, you know, it, it, it's important. Uh, we yeah. got a couple of questions that are cut. Go ahead. I'll let you finish your thought. And then we got a couple oh, no. questions. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, you're spot on. Perfect. Yeah. But we have a couple of them, you know, this is uh, Ryan Graham. We, we roast him all the time. So he wants to know so far, you know, what your highest series to date is. So my highest series to date was an 820. Threw it at Clearview two years ago now. All right. 820. And I'm sure Ryan wanted you to say that because I think he had 824 this weekend. <laughs> Just so he could say he beat you by four pins. But yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't count because, you know, it's Ryan. Uh, we're going to leave that. But uh, Paul, Paul had asked a question too. So Paul came in. You know what? What non-local house do you like to bowl at? So non-local. I'm gonna assume that he means uh, other than Clearview. Um, I'm gonna probably say, as crazy as it is, it's a nice little house over in York called East Lincoln. One of my favorite places. It seems like I really do well there. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like going over there to bowl. Um, it's family owned. They're always generous. They, they treat you like you're part of their family when you go there. And it's, it's always a good time. Um, you know, it just seems like a house that carries well too. Um, one of the first times I went, they said, Oh, you're going to bowl in a tournament at, e- at easy Lincoln, easy East or something like that. And then I was like, don't quite understand why walked in the house and there's 800 plaques everywhere. So, um, you know, I kind of learned real quick that the house carries and it doesn't play real super hard. Yeah, I, th- I think they lost the title of that in York County, though, because if you look, Suburban Bowlerama, I- I'm pretty sure that they have taken over the title of just have an honor score. Uh, every, yeah. every night, somebody's putting up 300, 800 there. It's kind of silly. So uh, I might have to go bowl league there just to, you know, kind of boost my eagle up a little bit and, you know, see if I can average 250 for an entire year. Uh, yeah, I-, I agree on the uh, Suburban, though, because uh... – about three years ago, Jill and I bowled a Valentine's tournament over there, and threw I threw eight hundred one. So I mean, it was it was a house that definitely it plays well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't, I, and and I know Terry has put in an incredible renovation there. So you know, nothing against the center. I don't mean it anything that way at all. Uh, you know, we support all proprietors, but uh, I I can't wait to actually get up there and see the place because I know during the. Uh, the lockdown, you know, and, and after the lockdown, we reopened, he was still doing renovations and, uh, you know, the place looks gorgeous. So yeah. interested to see that and, you know, kind of getting there too. And, 
you know, I couldn't agree more East Lincoln. You know, I, I like bowling there too. I like to, you know, support the Schnuer family as much as I can. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a, uh, it's a love hate for me in that building. I think it's, uh, you know, certain pairs, but same as you, I've had quite a bit of success in that building. Uh, a lot of, a lot of wins. Um, um, you know, maybe one I remember the most, and that's when I kicked your ass. But you yeah, know. we'll say yeah. you're, you're sniffing at other. I could take her down there, but I have yet to beat you there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it, you know, it, it's you know, and I, I don't want to have to bull carry there again because I, I do have her number in that building for some reason. But you know, it's just a matter of time. You know, if I, I catch her again, she's gonna run me over. So <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. I'm probably same for me. She's probably got it marked and waiting for me. You know, sooner or later we'll line back up and I'll, I'll be regret making comments. <laughs> yep, absolutely. But we're on here. So all's fair until they hear it later. So, I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, Carrie's actually, she's making some dinner right now. We usually eat before we go to a uh, league. So I'm sure uh, I'll get punched in the arm or something here. Whether I make it through the entire feed or afterwards, I'll probably get yeah. punched. So, but, you know, it, it's it's all good. You know, uh, it's all in good fun. You know, that's what this game is, again, is supposed to be about. But uh, one of the other things that comes to mind, and, you know, uh, Mark Wal Walters wants to know if you can uh, – he's broke, wants to know if he can borrow five bucks from me, by the way. But uh, one of the yeah, – uh, I'm, I'm still throwing out that same 21.9% interest, Mark, you know. So uh, if you want to borrow five, I can give you give you five. You might need to help him with the math. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure Mark can figure out that 21 – you know, 9.96% rate. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, one of the other things we like to, you know, ask individuals, you know, on the program. So we talked a little bit about the bowling and stuff. So uh, we always get the question, you know, what's currently in your bag? What do you like in? Um, what are you looking forward to? Okay. So in my bag, usually the first ball out is um, the Prism Hybrid. Um, that's usually my go-to, especially if I'm at Clearview. It seems to blend out the wet and dry very well there. Um, so, you know, usually that's my first ball out of the bag. Um, I also then uh, have a Prism Warp also in my bag. Um, and then I um, have a Phantom in my bag. Um, I, I do have a urethane pitch purple in my bag that everybody, when I get it out, says, oh, you're bringing the cheater ball out because Ryan Graham's going to love this. I do throw that ball very well. Um, so I normally will go to it if I'm struggling or I got to keep the ball out in front of me. Um, I usually go to that ball, you know, pretty quickly. Um, trying to think of what else I have in my bag. Um, I do have the redemption solid. Um, don't use that as much cause I don't find the opportunity to, to, to use it. But as I start to try to bowl more tournaments, uh, I'm, I'll definitely be utilizing that piece of equipment. Yeah. Bigger um, piece. I'm in a place for it. it. Yep. Um, probably the one that I'm looking forward to the most coming out is the um, MB uh, the MB that's getting ready to come out uh, on the 19th. Jeff always mm -hmm. sees my messages on Facebook that I'll be that guy that's the video craze there at midnight waiting for the release because I did every I did see that rolled uh, the, the first night you guys rolled it down there. Just how smooth it comes off of Carrie's hand. Oh, yeah. um, here's where I'll be able to give Carrie some props because uh, usually when I watch Carrie roll a ball. Um, she plays similar lines to what I like to play, keeping the ball out in front of you. And mm -hmm. when I watched that ball go through the pins, it was just, oh, my gosh, I got to have that in my bag. And then yeah. uh, I've been just watching all the videos of different people throwing, and it's just like, holy smokes, this is amazing. I, I'm going to have to have that piece of equipment in my bag. Can't and wait it, to get it. And it is pretty special. I mean, uh, I did, you know, in the videos that I shot, I shot some with Jason. Uh, Jeffrey is on Jaber Bowling, and then we, uh, we turned around, and Carrie and I threw it again this past week. And I threw it at box both times. And, uh, you know, I, I talked on the program about, you know, waking the MB up for me a little bit um, and kind of slow it down a little bit. And I hit that thing with a 2000 pad. Unbelievable. Ball's just yeah. really, really good. So, uh, but Mark, it did ask a real question here, you know. Okay. Uh, legit question. If you could bowl with anyone past or present, who would it be? And do not feel pressured that your wife said her on here. <laughs> Answer it honestly. <laughs> Uh, well, I wouldn't want to bowl with her right now because she'd probably beat me. But um, honestly, I would probably have to say my grandfather because he was a big bowler. Um, he was from the Columbia Bowling Lane days. Um, he had his own honor scores, and he did it back when the equipment was not as um, uh, high performance as it is today. Um, so I would love for that opportunity to try to take him on and see if I could beat him. Um mm -hmm. So from that, I would love to have a chance to bowl with my grandfather because my grandfather did pass away when I was I was 18 and 
back then for bowling for me, it was just have fun, go out and have a good time. Um, so I would love that opportunity. Um, if Marcus Moore asking around a pro, I just really, really love watching the PWBA rather than the men because the women, um, I'll tell you what, you, I, I was able to attend a PWBA event with Jill when she bowled up at Harrisburg and they were all just so pleasant, so nice. They talked to you like you're a human being. They didn't act like they were better than you. Um, and I was hearing some uh, commu- uh, just communication and talk back and forth with some of the ball reps. They get told to do something. They go out and do it. And they, they repeat it over and over and over. And, you know, so um, like Danielle McEwen would be a great person to bowl with. Daria would she, – she actually bowled on Jill's Lane, and she was just fun to talk to, having a great time you know, laugh at it. And she wasn't even bowling her best and she was just still enjoying the sport. All right. You got to take a step back sometime and, and remember why you're there, right? You're, you're afforded yeah. these uh, opportunities. Uh, Terry asks, you know, what, what is your aspiration with the game? So I'm going to show my age a little bit. So I want to continue to learn over the next four to five years because I would like to start to try to bowl some PBA 50 stuff. Some of the senior stuff went on that. And so from now till then, I would really like to get the opportunity to maybe attend a regional event or two um, just to kind of see where my game is, see where I need to fix, see what I need to work on. Um, I know, um, you know, I want to be able to take advantage of some of our team members that do that now, some of them that understand it. Um, The transition, I want to really work on that, understanding how to transition and how to move. Um, really understand what the ball's telling me because that's probably one of the weaknesses of the game. If I can get lined up early, I can sit there and, you know, score really high. Um, if I miss the transition or, you know, I don't get it from the start, then I struggle until things kind of come come to me then. Yeah, waiting for the lane to come to you doesn't work out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's really where I would like to see my game go to is really – um, you know, and I know I've, I've mentioned this to you in the past is, hey, can we do some classes? Can we do some other things to really mm-hmm. understand what the lanes tell me that to, to, to do, where to move my feet, what ball to use to make sure I'm starting with the right equipment and then just really get out there and see where the gaps are in my game so I can continue to develop. Yep. Good. And I know you, you mentioned about liking the PWBA, but Harold asked uh, who your favorite PBA bowler is to watch. Um, I would have to say my, the current PBA I know a lot of people frown, but I like watching uh, Belmo bowl. I mean, I, I know he he's a two-hander, but just to, some of the things that that guy's doing is, is amazing. Um, I really like watching him bowl. Um, Norm Duke, you know, a guy that is up there in age that just continues to go out there, no matter who he's bowling, puts on the best performance, and, you know, and constantly finishing really well in, in most of the tournaments he's entered into. Right. You know, you don't have to love the two handed style. You know, I'm open about it. You know, you know, I'll bust the chops of some of my staff players that are two handed. You know what I mean? Like I equal opportunity. I bust on the one handed players and the two handed ones. But, you know, whether you like Belmo or you don't like Belmo or you don't like the two handed bowling style, you have to respect just how good the guy is. Yeah. And what uh, he's accomplished already. You know, accomplishments, whether it be, you know, titles, anything you're looking at there. But what you have to understand is how accurate the guy is um, Mm -hmm. and what he's doing. And, um, you know, when it comes to the sport in general, whether you support two hands or not, it has been big for the sport. Um, You know, in a sport where kids were starting to sway away. And I've told this story before, you know, when I was growing up um, and I'm 42 now, so, you know, I'm a little younger than Paul, but when I grew up, there wasn't really a lot of organized sports on a Saturday morning up against junior bowling. Okay. So, you know, there, there might've been some like midget football or something. It was usually in the afternoon and a little soccer, but not, not much. Now you have organized sports all weekend, right? So you have so many other things that are conflicting to keep, you know, kids, one, giving them different opportunities or, or a conflict that they can't do both. Um, but, you know, to see the two-handed style kind of come in and grab on to some of the youth, um, you know, those are the bowlers of our future. So whether they do it with two hands or one hand or back a ball or whatever they do, again, they're solidifying keeping the sport growth. And, and that's what's really, really great. You know, all of us need to adapt. You know, I'm, I've never been a two-handed player, but I can coach it. Uh, yeah. and, and I have to be better and, and understand and learn and do all those things so I can help these individuals, whether they're one-handed or two-handed or 
don't use their thumbs at all, you know, it, or either hand. I don't know, whatever. Next thing you know, somebody might throw it over their head. And I don't know. <laughs> you know I, I hope not, but yeah. you know, it, it, it is, uh, it's part of the game and uh, it's not going anywhere. And uh, you can definitely, there's a distinct advantage if you're good at it. Um, but I encourage anyone that's on the feed and you're hearing this from me, whether you think, you know, two hands have an advantage, go try to bowl two handed. It is not easy. Okay. It's, it's no different than trying to be really good at one handed. Uh, you can get your thumb out of the way. There's some things you can do two handed that you can't with one. But at the end of the day, you're either going to be a really good one handed player or a really good two handed player. You still have to put the work ethic in and, and learn how to do it correctly. Um, so, you know, support it, support bowling. You know, that's really what it comes down to. Exactly. Right. Uh, Carrie asked the question, you know, I think, I don't know if this one's been asked before, but she wanted to know, um, you've been with Puret now for a little over a year, but you know, what, uh, what made you want to be part of this team? So when this decision came down to want to be part of the team, it was, um, you know, just what you said that this kind of in the beginning when you, you bowled, uh, Friday night, it felt like family. It felt like you were just out on a Friday night with your family. And, you know, so I wanted to be part of something special like that. I wanted to be part of somebody that, or a group of people that shared something that I love to do. Um, since I've started bowling, I've really just t taken the game and it break to heart. And, you know, I love it. I live it, um, you know, from uh, November to April, I'm pretty much spend more time at the bowling alley than I think Henry Blau, the owner of the bowling alley, spends there. You know, he's always saying he's going to put a cot out back for me and just, you know, let me stay out back and kind of be security. Um, but here I had an opportunity to join a team that could help take my game to the next level. Um, I could be part of something. I, and then I could also then be able to um, – offer that same learnings that I was getting to my friends through myself or recommending them to the center to get their equipment checked, to be able to get the equip right equipment in their hands. Because um, just speaking on myself in the short time that I've been in the game, I've been through uh, three different uh, pro shops drilling equipment, and I just never got the same feel as I have in my equipment today. And one thing that I, I'm a strong believer in is I would never recommend bad service to anybody, even if uh, somebody tried to pay me to do it. I'm only going to recommend what I think is best for them to improve themselves because money is um, the, the money they're spending is hard earned money. They're, they're, they're there for you figure a bowling ball is two hundred dollars. They're there for a quarter of a week to buy themselves a bowling ball. They're spending a whole day at work. So I don't want them going out and buying a bowling ball that has no reason to be in their bag. And before I joined a pure team, I really didn't even understand that. You know, I was being spoon fed that Storm was the best equipment on the line on the market, you know, and this is the latest and this is what you need and this drilling. And then when I'm looking at my bowling balls and before even before I joined period, I'm like questioning why every one of them had to pin at the same spot. They were all drilled the same, you know, so I would go out on the lanes and the ball would only make a one board difference. And I couldn't understand why. And then that was the biggest thing is I joined the pure team is the education that I'm getting to what a pin does. I've asked Jeff some questions about pin to pat just the other day when I was down there bowling my mm -hmm. uh, uh, match for the, the team tournament. It's just always asking questions and trying to understand because I feel this can take my game better. It can help me promote the game better through my uh, high school bowlers, my kids, my wife, my family, you know, and, and it's just, felt right. All right. Good. And it, it's, it's the truth. I mean, and it's, uh, it is a small family here. You know, we have, we love having all our staff on here on Mondays and mix them in with some, uh, you know, brands of Brunswick staffers here and there as well. But, uh, you know, we're here, you know, as a team and we're here to educate everybody that's out there. So, you know, when we talk and you're meeting Paul and you're meeting other people that have been on, you know, the whole intention behind that is to be a liaison, uh, to you out there, if you have questions and you can't get me directly right off the way, they're going to at least steer you in the right direction. Um, they're going to, you know, help you understand uh, exactly what you need. Um, and, and it's an extension of, you know, period in general. You know, it's it's not just a brick and mortar. It's uh, all the uh, all the staff that's out there. We're all here for the same thing. And that's to uh, make everybody out there the best version of themselves. That's important. Um Paul, I say this every single time, but, you know, we're already at the 30 minute mark here, you know, and it's easy. It's easy to get rolling when we're talking. But is there anything that I might not have asked Paul Moore um, 
that might be unique or something that uh, you think, you know, I should have asked you something about yourself? Um, no, um, I probably can tell you my other hobby. My wife would have probably loved me to wear my shirt that says um, my wife beats me at cornhole or something like that. So we do play cornhole quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, usually on Tuesday nights, we'll stop at the shop because we're on our way to Ephrata to play in a uh, weekly local tournament league. Mm -hmm. But I'm amazed by how similar cornhole is to bowling. You know, I take my eyes, I put it somewhere, I toss a one-pound bag across the room 27 feet trying to land it to get it to slide into a hole. And it's just amazing. Um, how, you know, the muscle memory is very similar. Um, other than I don't try to, you know, get a little bit of spin to it, but you know, mm -hmm. you still got to throw the bag flat. You still got to get the bag projected to where your eyes want it to land. Um, and we just find that the family that we play cornhole with is very similar to the family that we bowl with. You know, it's just very, very, um, family oriented. It's very, the camaraderie, the good time and, you know, the friendships that we build is, you know, something that we enjoy doing also. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I mean, you know, you People like, uh, you know, Walter Ray, you know, another throwing game. He's, you know, champion horseshoe player. A lot of, uh, you know, people that golf are relatively or uh, that bowl are relatively uh, good golfers. You know, a lot of the same techniques. Cornhole, I, I absolutely can see that. I mean, the only, con you know, difference there is, is I, and I said this to another person, if they can figure it out, but bowling is the only, you know, sport where we insert our hand all the way into a ball. Yeah. And we can't think of another one. Um, I, I've had this conversation with Brian O'Keefe. He talks about it all the time as well. It's, it's the only moment we physically insert it. The, the commonalities I have from like bowling to cornhole to golf is that my swing always does feel looser when I drink a few beers prior though. So, you know, it, it's the same thing. And, you know, if I'm going to the Eagles game and tailgate and I, I generally throw some pretty good bags. So if you, you all want to play me sometime, uh, come down to the link when we're allowed to, we're off timeout. And uh, I'll be glad to, uh, you know, give it a whirl. I don't mind getting my butt kicked. Yeah, yeah, we, we would definitely be interested in that. I'm not an Eagles fan, sorry, you know, but Jill Neither is. She, she, she's a huge Eagles fan, but um, I, I, I'm trying to get I, her to jump off the fall off the wagon and get on a real team this year. But I'm a season ticket holder, and I'm not even an Eagles fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just love. I love going out with my buddies. I love tailgating. I'm actually a Dolphins fan, so like right now this year. Uh, you know, I joke with Carrie every week. I was like, man, Miami's winning again. They're going to Super Bowl this year. I know it's not happening. Um, it's been a rough life being a Dolphins fan, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I love sports, so, you know, I can pretty much go to anything. You know, I go to the Eagles. I cheer for them when I'm there and stuff. So it's it's nothing like that. Um, anybody can cheer for the Eagles if you have enough booze in you prior. No problem. Yeah. If, you, if, like you're fun, fan, just, if you're a Dolphins fan, if you're a Dolphins fan, just winning your division feels like winning the Super Bowl for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it would. Um, you know, this year the Jets are absolutely horrific, but then, you know, the Patriots decided to win one, you know, yesterday. But uh, right now it's looking pretty good. But, uh, you know, is what it is. But I know uh, also, Paul, I believe you, you know, love – I know you guys are always posting, love going out boating, doing some fishing and stuff as well. So, um, unfortunately, when we had the invite to come down and join you this year, uh, we were getting ready to leave, and uh, I decided that it was a good time to have kidney stones for the first time in my life. And uh, <laughs> so we're, we're, we're definitely going to take a, uh, you know, a, a rain check on that one for next year. That's definitely happening. That sounds like a great time. Um, but outside of that, uh, I doesn't look like there's any more in there. Chris, I know you asked the question. We kind of went over that. Um, he's looking forward to drill the, uh, the MB next to answer your question there. Um, and I'm not going to talk about your Raiders, but uh, I, did, yeah, <laughs> I did bet on them yesterday. So thank you. Um, anyway, uh, Paul, you know, I want to thank you for uh, hopping on and, and uh, you know, being part of this team and hopping on and talking to us here tonight. Um, and, you know, as we always like to end every one of these sessions, you know, and make sure, you know, before they go and put us on timeout again right now, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, support proprietors, local pro shop. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Joe's what, trying to show that, off the dog. <laughs> yeah, is that is it a Morky? It's a Yorkie, it a, yeah. It's a Yorkie or a Morky? Yeah, Yorkie. Uh, what do they call it? A toy or something? Teacup. He's like three uh, years teacup. old. And he weighs like three pounds. Yeah, teacup. I, what, years ago, I had a Morky, which was like a Maltese and a Yorkie mix that was uh, almost identical to that, but a little bigger. It was a it was a larger rat. But, <laughs> 
But anyway, uh, gang, um, again, thanks, Paul, for joining us tonight. Um, one thing uh, to go over here before I get off of here, we did put up a fun little uh, fun little contest tonight uh, for the Purit team. So on a Monday night, uh, myself, Kerry Smith, Kevin Bandrowski, and Dominic Motillo, Always Bowl League at Laser Lanes in New York, and we put a little contest. you got to go to the Purit Bowling page on Facebook, and uh, you're basically going to pick the order that you think we're going to finish series-wise. So, you know, if you think I'm going to win, it would be me and then Carrie and then Dom. And then you're going to you're gonna choose what we have for a team total for the night. So example would be, you know, the order in four and 2,800 for the night. Uh, whoever gets the order correct and gets the closest on the overall, uh, we're going to throw out, give you a, 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 one of the uh, Performance Pure Wicking shirts. Um, very lightweight, you know, nice little thing with a new logo on it. Uh, just something fun to do on there. And for the rest of this week, we always talk about our new feed. So last week we had uh, we had Bill O'Neill on, and uh, we had a great conversation with him. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the brand new Radical Incognito, and we're going to have uh, special guest Andrew Anderson on with us tomorrow night uh, to talk a little bit about the ball. And then Thursday we're going to be doing a remote session at Feasterville, uh, which is where Joe Pelusic's shop is. And we're going to do throw it Thursday on location there. So a little different this week. Uh, just going to mix it up a little bit. But uh, stay tuned for those. And thank you, everyone out there, for joining us tonight. And uh, go bowling, gang. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. All righty. Have a good evening, everybody. You too.